there are more bacteria and viruses in the human body than there are human cells. So most people don't really think about this. So now that you know that this is the case, how should we think about this? And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So uh, historically, uh, in, the, in, in the scientific literature, it was estimated that there's, you can see, the widely cited 10 to 1 ratio. So this is not just people blogging uh, at a coffee shop who are, are English majors. These are scientists. So this is not something that has been hyped up by non-science people. So it's widely cited. And so the, these authors uh, suggest that they present evidence that suggests that the ratio between bacterial cells in the body and our human cells is actually one to one. Now that doesn't really change anything. I mean, you have to just look at yourself in the mirror and go, man, I'm like, well, there's, my, I am half bacteria and half human cells in terms of, of total count. So we'll talk about viruses in a second too, but this is important for thinking about conditions like say strep throat or pneumonia. So if you uh, Google Streptococcus pyogenes. So what is strep pyogenes? Well, it is an opportunistic pathogen. Now look, it is part of the normal flora of the respiratory tract. And it is strep pyogenes that is the most common bacterial cause of sore throat. You can go down to the bottom. This is from the NIH and is a medical microbiology book. It's on their internet bookshelf. Streptococcus pneumonia and, or pneumoniae and to a lesser extent Streptococcus pyogenes are part of the normal human nasopharyngeal flora. So this bacteria, uh, Strep pyogenes, that is the strep throat bacteria. Uh, when I got strep throat when I was younger, I thought, you know, oh, I caught strep throat. I, went, I, I caught a cold. I went out to the got strep. Uh, my impression was that somehow I was exposed to strep as opposed to the fact that I am part strep. And the issue is that strep uh, uh, bacteria, they are opportunistic, which means if they're given a chance, they will proliferate and pr cause the immune system to react and give us the symptoms of, of infection. And so... It is our own strep that does this. Now, of course, someone could cough theoretically, and they, maybe they fly around. I don't know for sure. But I'm really more worried about how I interact with my own flora. That is the big issue, not somebody else's flora. It is my flora. And remember, I am half bacteria when it comes to cell, um, my, the, the cells in my body, as are you. But what about viruses? What about viruses? Well, uh, this is a really cool paper, and if you want, you can just uh, Google the title or whatever uh, browser you use, and you will get this paper. So what are we told in this paper? We are told a rough estimation based on bacteria infecting viruses. Do you know you had those in your body? That, that our bodies, and I don't know what percentage is, uh, maybe all, I have no idea, but our bodies bacterial cells are normally infected by viruses and those are called these viruses are called bacteriophages or phages for short so if you ever look at the term phages it 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 is the viruses the, the viruses that that infect bacterial cells and this indicates that there are 100 times more viruses than eukaryotic cells in our body eukaryotic cells are going to be our human cells now, I don't know if this is closer to 10 to 1 or 1 to 1 as it is with, with bacteria. Again, it doesn't make any difference because independent of whether it's 10 to 1, 100 to 1, 1 to 1 when it comes to bacteria and viruses, we know that the human body, the body, the human body's content of cells are going to be half human cells and the other half, if not more, are going to be bacteria and viruses. So this means, when you look at all this, that basically viral fragments 
represent 8% of our genome. So this, in this paper, they give us an image of this. So here is figure one. You can look at this yourself, obviously. Green means documented presence of viruses, and then purple is not documented. So you can see they've got the various human systems, digestive, respiratory, circulatory, integumentary means skin, genitourinary, obviously, with what that means, and then nervous system. So in the nervous system, they've identified herpes, now viridae, viral family viridae, that means virus. So adenoviruses, herpes viruses. In the nervous system, I've never heard of flaviviruses or bornaviruses, never heard of those, but they're in the nervous system too. Let's go to coronavirus. There you go. Now, this is not the coronavirus that is circulating now, but you can see that our respiratory system is naturally inhabited by a type of coronavirus. Now, when you looked at the respiratory system, look at all the green that has been identified. Natural, naturally in our bodies, we've got all these different viruses in our respiratory system, digestive system, and on down the line. So if we are in another, and they give us another picture, you can see they show these systems again and illustrating that viruses are prolific in the human body. So why aren't we all dead from uh, all these bacteria and viruses that outnumber human cells. Because when you take the bacterial cells that are one-to-one, -one, let's say it's one-to-one, -one, and you throw the viruses in there, that means that there's more bacterial cells and more viruses. Remember, viruses aren't cells, they're fragments. Uh, they are, there are more, you can see how they're characterized, double-stranded DNA viruses, right? So these are not cells. Uh, but the combination of viruses plus bacterial cells outnumber human cells. So how come we're all not sick? And there's a reason why we're all not sick. And I'll show you at least the easiest way to look at this. So to embrace how important our viruses are, human-associated viruses control the microbial diversity of the human gut and skin. Without these viruses, we would be in big trouble. Now, look what we're told here. Healthy individuals, healthy individuals are able to rapidly clear transient viral infections is clear by immune cells or is moved through the airway. So this is very important. Now, now what, what I did here, we see the, the, the green and the yellow. I just put into a, a PDF document allows you to search for words. So I just, I just searched for clear. So you can kind of get through papers and get to key areas by putting in, key, in, in keywords. So we are told that healthy individuals rapidly clear viruses. If, and they're you know, transient infections. Now, the word infection here means you would have no symptoms. So if you just have this amount of, 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 of viral activity, and now it's this amount that's characterized as an infection. You may have to get this high before there are symptoms. So most people who are healthy clear before any symptoms occur. So that's really important to understand. And that should make us think about the population of people out there who have no symptoms when they are exposed to the coronavirus. Well, why? Well, because they have a better relationship with their current flora, and they're able to clear the virus from the body with, without uh, symptomatic knowledge. It's really quite amazing how that works. So how do we screw this up? How do we screw this up? And what we screw up is our normal relationship to our bacterial flora and our which is called the microbiome, and our so-called viral flora, which is called the virome. Well, we do it like this. America's junk food diet makes, you even, makes us even more vulnerable to the coronavirus. This is from the New York Post. So everybody knows that heart disease and stroke is more common in the obese population, leading to 300 premature deaths. Brutal, brutal uh, burden on our healthcare system. And obesity renders us more susceptible to COVID-19 and other viral infections and other bacterial infections. And what I think the issue is, is that once we have a disrupted relationship with our own microbiome and virome, we are unable to clear uh, novel viruses and bacteria because we are already flamed up and unable to clear it properly. So it's not just diet, which is what obviously deflame nutrition focuses on, but deflame is really the focus. So what else causes us to flame? Well, 
you just go to Google search and put in sleep loss and risk of viral infection. This is from the Mayo Clinic website. Yes, lack of sleep affects your immune system. Studies show that people who don't get quality sleep or enough sleep are more likely to get sick after being exposed to a virus such as the common cold virus. A lack of sleep also affects how fast you recover because when you're flamed up, you get sicker and it's more difficult to recover. Now, this is from Mayo Clinic website, and there are multiple papers published in the scientific literature that state the same thing. Sleep loss increases risk of viral infection. So this tells us something about what we should be doing during this coronavirus era, and that is eat less crappy food, get some of that body fat off, work on our sleep. If you don't sleep well all the way through the night, well, then find a time to take a nap. And most people need to get at least six hours. Well, that's typically the low end of what the average person needs. Many people need more than six. So you want to get whatever hours you need in the day. Find a time to take a nap if need be. And of course, work on stress. Right back to Google, psychological stress and risk of viral infection. And this was published back in 1991. This has been known for a long time. So psychological stress associated in dose responsive matter with an increased risk of acute infectious respiratory illness. So we know we should, we should be working on our stress level. Not a complicated thing to think about. What else do people do that puts them at risk for increased uh, uh, or puts them at increased risk for infection? Well, cigarette smoking and infection. So we go down below. For example, smokers incur a two to four times increased risk of invasive pneumococcal disease. So that would be uh, pneumonia. So uh, now we have influenza risk is several fold higher and is much more severe in smokers than non-smokers. So when we look at these four issues I just mentioned, so overeating, becoming obese, not getting enough sleep, not modulating, uh, 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 modulating our stress properly, in other words, avoiding stressors that we know we can avoid, and then smoking, all increase the risk of getting a viral infection. And so it just disturbs me that that really is not emphasized enough uh, in the news. So you know, this is the first slide I showed. So how should we think about this? It's very simple, very simple. We need to deflame ourselves so that we maintain a healthy relationship with the, vac the bacteria and viruses that occupy our bodies. So I did a video back in February. This is one of the images that I use, and it shows all of the different flame factors. So you can see here free radicals, prostaglandins are all inflammatory chemicals when produced in excess. And multiple, multiple lifestyle and unavoidable things like aging but lifestyle factors that we see here cause us to flame up. So the thing to do is work on your flame factors. Americans should be told by all the talking heads in the news that we need to work on our flame factors and get ourselves out of this chronic inflammatory state that most Americans live in because most are overweight, stressed, and not sleeping enough not good at all. And then dealing with that by eating even more pro-inflammatory foods because you get that momentary pleasure experience. So this is what the, if, if you go into the Deflame Nutrition video list, you can click on videos. This is what this, they call this image, the thumbnail that you see on a website. So this is what you'll see in case you want to watch it. So at Deflame Nutrition, we obviously recognize all the pro-inflammatory issues that I just mentioned. But the focus here, of course, is how to deal with this in terms of diet. And so these are the, the, the four books that you can check out. You can look through them on Amazon, look through the table of contents to see if that information works for you. And of course, well, you're already on the YouTube channel, but I post stuff on Facebook. And so you can follow me there and subscribe if you like to the YouTube channel. Thanks for your time.